Friday night at 6 o'clock, right here, there is a concert uh, for the uh, fundraiser for New Hope Church. Uh, Mr. Blake is involved in it with their youth program. Uh, if at all possible, come this uh, Saturday night at 6 o'clock. How much does it cost, John? Oh, it's free and asking for a donation. Go for it, kids. That's you too, Belinda. I mean, uh, 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 Amelia, kid. Have your Bibles. We're studying a time to build. And today's topic is working well with other people. Uh, if, the first time I, I read this chapter 3, I thought it looked like uh, another book in the Bible, First Chronicles, uh, uh, where they list just the names, 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 names of individuals. It's a little bit dry and boring to read names that I cannot pronounce and uh, you know they're spelt long etc uh, but I think all of us like to get praise right okay well I praise Paul Evans for his faithfulness in the political arenas to provide us with information of the laws that are happening and changing that infect the church and Christianity. I'm thankful for Sister Kathy back there for fixing the flowers in the windows. They look fantastic. I'm thankful for Jesse and Rhonda back there for greeting people when they come in. I'm thankful for Marissa to be uh, a wife to Joey. I'm thankful for Jose and his faithfulness in giving, and his wife for supporting Jose. He's a headache, but she accepts it. Uh, I'm thankful for Maria because she can speak Spanish. I'm thankful for David because he can sing. I'm thankful for Alan because he's a board member. Did I forget anyone? Oh, I'm thankful for Gina. She is so faithful to come and bring her kids to worship God in this house. Amen. Oh, I'm thankful for John back there. John is so faithful to serve this church. He's part of New Hope, but he serves this church by working with the sound and equipment. I'm thankful for Pastor Linda for putting up with me. I'm thankful for Sarah, uh, her service back there. See, I, I could praise every person here. I'm thankful for Sherry. She's not paying attention, but that's all right. Someone tell her later that I was talking about Sherry, and she missed it. Uh, I'm thankful for Linda. She cleans the church so fantastic. Mabel is awesome worship leader. Rachel, she collects that money. Yeah. She's the most important one here. Oh. Then there's Blake and Joey and Kent and... Rebecca, see, everybody in this church. See, names are not boring. Now, we read this chapter, and it's just a list of name, 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 name. Uh, uh, escape there, Blake. Hit the escape button. And uh, I'm not going to talk about this guy. Um, our, our text today is basically a list of names of people who have achieved things. Now, there are a few names that were not on that list because they didn't do nothing, did nothing. And I find it interesting that Nehemiah's name is not in this list of names in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 3. Himself is not named. And I think that reason for, we'll go to uh, 
the uh, 586 BC slide. I, I think the reason why is because he didn't want uh, attention drawn to him. And uh, a little bit of history, in, as we told you before, in uh, 586, uh, Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylon, Babylonian armies captured uh, the Jews. Uh, Jerusalem was destroyed, the walls knocked down, etc. We've talked and talked about that. But during this, and they were taken off to captivity, but during this time, God did not forsake the Jewish people. I hope you understand. Oh, I forgot to talk about Hilda. Hilda is a fantastic accountant. Uh, board meeting tomorrow night. And uh, Beth is a uh, fantastic tapper. She's reading. We talked about you also, but uh, you'll have to ask somebody what I said about you also, same as equal sharing. Uh, <laughs> No matter when we go through great difficulty, God has not forsaken you. God does not forsake us. During this time in captivity in Babylon, uh, God set up a new king, uh, Cyrus. And that king made an order that... Jewish people could go back home uh, a group, a group, and a group over a time frame of 100 years. He sent people, and when they arrived at Jerusalem, they were in shock because the place was in a wreck. <clears throat> Through Nehemiah's prayer in chapter 1, we learned that he was concerned about the problems in Jerusalem's desolation. He was uh, convicted about God's character. He confessed his sins. He was confident about God's promise. And he was committed to get involved. We have to become committed to get involved. We learned he had five tools, right? in his toolbox. Waiting, trusting, praying, planning, testifying. Where's the slide, Blake? Ah, uh, he also, you're way behind. Oh no, you're way ahead now. He also had uh, five tasks. He replenished his uh, resources. He assessed the need, recruited workers, inspired confidence, and handled opposition. And then in chapter 3, he takes 44 different groups of people and puts them to work. And in this chapter 3, it shows people working together. Hmm. I hope you could underline in your Bible every time you see the words, next to him, next to them, after, after him, and after them. I counted it up, and I, well, my Bible, I underlined it in yellow and marked it, and I think I missed one because uh, my Bible in the computer said that 28 times, but I only found 27, so I challenge you to underline in your Bible and find the 28 times it says those words there. You see, this chapter is about working together. 
every person is to be involved in ministry because everyone has a job to do. Sometimes it's hard to find the right job. I hope you like your job wherever you work. David likes his job. What do you do, David? He makes vitamins. Vitamins. I hope you like your job. Sometimes it's hard to find the right job. I gave you a paper. It was a uh, play on words. It's for hearing people, basically, but, you know, the guy got a job making orange juice, but he could not concentrate. You know, that's orange juice, whatever. Some of us are doing exactly what we're supposed to do. Both with your work in the your career, and also in the kingdom of God. Other people are struggling. Oh, they have a good job in the world, but they're struggling with their spiritual jobs. And I thought maybe this would make you feel better. Um, someone said, life, I like work. This is me. I like to work. Work fascinates me. I can sit and watch them work all day long. <laughs> yeah. When it uh, comes to work for the Lord, there's no place to sit back and watch. Be a spectator. Be a couch potato. Is that the next one? No. Maybe I didn't put it on there. These, these workers accomplished an incredible task. They beat the world record with it. The purpose of work Nehemiah pointed the people to the purpose. The purpose of the work is to make sure that God is glorified. They're not just working on the walls. They, they were worshiping their worthy God. They were bummed out about the... Uh, Conditions in the city, yeah. And they were disgraced by the enemy that was there. And it was hard for them to sing. Do you know that Psalm uh, 48 2 says, describes Jerusalem Beautiful is thy loftiness and the joy of the whole earth. That song was rough to sing for the Jewish people in, in Jerusalem because Jerusalem was collapsed and demolished. They wanted to see the power and the glory and the awesome splendor of Jerusalem like it was before. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Whatever you find, to, oh, uh, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it with all in all the glo for, glo for glory for God when we are ready to do things here at CCC we always try to attempt big things to make sure God gets the glory we did that with the air conditioning units and God got the glory. Let's take a look at verse 1, 3, 1. Elishahib, Hib, 
the high priest and his other fellow priest went to work and rebuilt the sheep gate. They dedicated it and set its doors in place. I find this very important. Why? Because that sheep gate led into the temple area. The first thing they did was build the access into the temple and uh, to worship and to sacrifice God. It was named the sheep, uh, sheep Gate because that's the place where they brought all the sheep for the sacrifices in the temple. <laughs> By beginning there, in this construction process, they worshiped God first. It's important, it's critical. We do not focus on the task and forget about God. We need to remember God first. Remember that God is in control. God is not impressed with your labor. I am. But God more impressed on why you did it and that there's worship must always proceed work. I hope you have made the decision that you are sold out to God. Completely devoted to Him. If we are, we need to get ready to work. If you're not totally committed to God, then keep the main thing, keep that the main thing. What? God. First Peter, Peter 3.15 says, But in our hearts set apart Christ as Lord. That's the main goal in my heart that I set up Christ as Lord. Next, we find out that the people work. Or we, we see the names of the people in the work. And if you've already read this book, you know that the wall was built in record time, 52 days. You remember last week I told you how wide the wall? How much? How wide was that wall? I'm deaf. Carter, were you here? Oh, Blake told Carter, three to four foot wide, and it was broke down. I'm glad Blake paid attention last week. How high was it? Forty-five foot high? It's a little high. Well, somewhere between 15 to 20 feet tall and more than a mile long. And they built it in 52 days. How many days have they been working on that freeway? No, you know. They need to hire some people like them to build our freeways in Southern California. Um... That's for sure. But it was record time. And back then, they didn't have the machines that would pick it up and the cranes that would drive. They didn't have all that fancy equipment we have today. The things we learn in this chapter. Work well with other people. 
leaders must set the example. <clears throat> and I hope I set the example for you. In verse 1, we notice that everyone in the city uh, should have been busy with the work. It, it was the priest who started it. The high priest made no hesitation to get involved. The high priest swung the hammer. They pushed the wheelbarrow. They were dignified people. Like my new vest. Like my new watch. You know? In their robes and all the glory about them. The stones of gold, etc. And I, I, I don't know if they changed into work clothes or not. But I know that I have work clothes over here in my office. I come to the office dressed up and then I change to my work clothes, my overalls, and I work. Uh, but those men, the priests, were the leaders, and they are the ones who were involved first. They accept the joyful responsibility of not just preaching and not just building, but all together. They committed to be involved in everything. But it's sad that this uh, Elilahib, Elisha Hib. Elisha Hib. He didn't stick with it. He made some serious problems. If we read in Numbers chapter 13, it tells us about, I mean, not Numbers, Nehemiah chapter 13, way over there, it tells us that Elisha Hib uh, made a lot of trouble later on. That's a good reminder for you and I. It's not how we start, but how we end. That counts. Secondly, God uses all kinds of people. You look at verse 8. Uzrael's son, Harhania, one of the goldsmiths. He made gold and rings and jewelry and things. And what's he doing? He worked on the wall and repaired the next section. And Haniah, one of the perfume makers, made repairs next to that. A perfume maker was carrying bricks, carrying wood or whatever. I don't think they made the walls with perfume. But I'd sure like to work with that guy. I bet he smelled good. The Lord did not need a thousand carpenters or masons. He needed ordinary people like you and me who were willing to work. They had different backgrounds, different cultures, different characteristics. They worked together. Some of them traveled 10 to 15 miles every morning to work on the wall. There was a place to work for everyone to get involved. One of the purposes of the church here is to mobilize. Make sure 
that you are workers. And God has set up in each one of you a skill. As we use our uh, own gifts, we will become fruitful. We will become filled. And the church will be fortified. When I read these chapter, I noticed another word that was very important. It's called section. That word section is in uh, this chapter 3, 13 different times. The people were divided and assigned, you work on that section, you work on that section. Now, Saturday, we need people to work work on the section of setting up the electrical and the, the tents and things like that for the fireworks stand. And then on uh, Tuesday, we need people to work on the section of unloading the fireworks, and you have to be 18 and over to even touch the box. Oh, well. But then we need, you see the sections in the church? We need ushers to collect the offering. We need people to clean the coffee area and take care of that. We need people to run the tech. We need people to sit in the pews. No one can do everything. But everybody can do something. Romans 12, 6 says, We have different gifts according to the grace given to us. Are you serving right now? I hope so. If you're just coming, warming the pew, that's not good enough. You need to grab a brick. Jump in. Make your plans for, in two weeks, Mission Sunday. How much will I give in the missions offering? How many already have that planned? I know a few of you do. <laughs> Are a plan for Mission Sunday in two weeks? How much you'll give to missions? You see, you need to get involved and plan it. Remember, two weeks ago, or last week, planning. Number three. I think I have five altogether. Whoa. I do not like this one. Some people will not work. Who is that? Carter back there. Mm-hmm. I know that's a lie. <laughs> but hey, don't look at the person next to you and say, oh, good, babies, Caitlin, won't work. Anthony won't work. He's too young. But Jose and Dad can work. Some people will not work. But there's a place for everyone. People some people will always refuse to exert themselves. Most people work, but some, you know. The next section was repaired by the men of Tekoa. But their nobles who led that group would not shoulder any of the work. Nobody. I'm up here. Tekoa was a town about 11 miles from Jerusalem. Some of the people 
commuted to the job. But who were the leaders in that city there? I'm sick today. I can't show up. They called in sick. Really, the text says they refused to participate in the work of God. Hey. They felt they were too important. They would not put their shoulders to the work. Ah. Uh. I hope there's no one here who would refuse to work, roll up their sleeves, and get involved. Because I'm too important. I teach a Sunday school class. I helped put the insulation in the chapel over here. That's a bad job. You have to wear masks, you have to wear safety glasses. You have to have long sleeves. If you don't, you're going to get that glass all over you. I forgot to wear a hat last Thursday. And after it's finished, I took my clothes off. I put them in the washing machine. I changed my clothes. I washed my hands and face. And that glass, it fell out of my hair and in my eye. And I Oh, I did that last Thursday. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. In July, we'll be doing more. As soon as we get our money from the fireworks stand, we can finish that prop project over there. I'll call you to for the work day on a Saturday in July. <clears throat> Jeremiah 48.10 is the rebuke. It says, curse on the man who is lax. That's not the airport there, L-A-X. No, 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 no. Who is lax in doing the Lord's work. And those who refuse to do the Lord's work also are missing out the greatest privilege of all time. I think it's wonderful to be involved in the Lord's work. Maria, S-A-R-A, la, 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 went with us to pass out food to the city of Norwalk a few months ago. Jesse and Rhonda, Marissa was there. You see, they were involved in the Lord's work. Oh, here we go. Pew potato. Go through it real quick. That's not us. Yeah. Few potatoes here are dead. No, I'll not say that. Uh, that's the name of a book. That's the name of a book. Pew, uh, death of a pew potato. We are not pew potatoes. Four. Some do more work than others. In every church, you have that. Every project, you do that. There are some who do more work than others. In verse uh, 27, it says, Next to them, the men of Teoka repaired another section. Even though their rulers wouldn't be involved, the men who were working there finished their job, and then went over and repaired another one. <clears throat> I don't want my leaders, their bad examples, I will show them I and the people from that city are good workers. 
Nehemiah asked them if they wanted another section, and they said, bring it on. We're ready. Another guy. All through this chapter, we read two or three other people doing the work of others. Verse 21, Miramoth, son of Uriah, son of Hakzo. Boy, I speak those names good. They repaired another section from the entrance of the house to the end of it. See, they finished one job, one job finished. What else? I want to do it. Most of us finish the work that the pastor gives you. Your job is to do this, this, and this. Finished it. Ah, uh, time to go home. But these men and women knew that the kingdom work was never finished kingdom work is never finished we can't sit back and watch Matthew 5 47 says what are you doing more than others Jesus asked that question What am I doing more than Mabel? Oh, no, we're not setting up competition here. No. Five. Some work with passion. Verse 20. Next to him, Bjork, son of Zabarai zealously repaired another section. The word zealous means to burn with fire. In verse uh, chapter four, verse six says the people worked. The people worked with all their heart. Everyone was working hard. Building a wall is not easy work. Everyone worked hard. But some of them worked with all their heart. If you ever need to hire somebody, I'll tell you, hire Jose. He works fast, hard worker. And really don't care what others are doing. I'm going to do my very best. I saw this last July the 4th. Uh, you know, people working together very hard doing their best. Oh, I had six. I thought I was finished at five. Some work with families. This is the final one. Some people work as families. They worked on the section in front of their home or they worked in another section with their families. I'm trying to see. I read something about a group of women working on this wall. I'm trying to find that. We we look at our neighborhoods. Uh, you need to look at your neighbor as your mission field. Serve your neighbor. Pray for them. 
You need to decide as a family. I'm talking to families. If your family is just your husband and your wife, that's fine. If it's just you, that's fine. But we need to pray. Let's go, Blake. Wake up. Pray, care, and share. That was bad. Sorry. Carter's a distraction. I know that. <laughs> you see... Our work gets distractions sometimes. And you just got to say, Carter, go sit over there. And do not bother me. I'm busy with the Lord's work. I'm just picking on you guys. Don't worry about it. I love you a little bit. But we need to decide as a family. How am I going to serve my neighbor? Uh, Andrew, are you here? Oh, Andrew is here. Just checking. Gabriel. Oh, Gabriel's here. How do you think you can serve your neighbor? Think about it, guys. And you need to get in a discussion group with your mom and with Justin and decide. Pick one neighbor. How can we serve that neighbor? I know. Get some eggs and... No. Get some fireworks and... Throw, no. That doesn't work. If they have big fireworks... Go over and clean up their yard after they're finished. Oh, that's a good job. Uh, we're called to start at the home. Oh, yeah, in verse, verse 12, it says, The daughters of Shalom worked on the wall. So, ladies, you're not exempt. The daughters worked. The families worked. Uh, we are reaching the world with this church. Yeah, the guy, Pastor Linda, talked about from Seattle. Watches on our website. Clicks on the videos and watches them. People all over the country watch our videos. And sometimes I think, well, that's a waste of time and effort. But it is not. Lives are touched through that. John 15, 16, Jesus, he gave the word appointed, strategically uh, placed them. He gave them a an exact job to do. Yeah. God has placed each one of us in a strategically right place where he wants us to be. God's work to be done we are called to cooperate together, work together. And we have to keep in mind the main thing is that God receives the glory. We will be getting the parking lot out here blacked, a new surface on it, and new white lines sometime in July. God is a faithful God taking care of this church. Our church is not going to pay for it. An individual came to me and said, I want to do this. I said, go for it. You have five grand? 
Go for it. They're making the plans. God is building this church, getting ready for great things to happen. I know this year is almost, almost gone. Only have 19 more Fridays till Christmas. No, 20 was before yesterday or before this Friday. Sarah's going to check it out. She thinks I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure it's only 19 more Fridays before Christmas. But between that time, I see God doing great and awesome and mighty things in this church. Leaders have to set the pace. God uses all kinds of people. Some will not work. Some will do more work. It's not. 26. Man, my math was wrong. Okay. She says it's 26. Hey, just gives God seven more, seven more weeks to do his work. Some will not work. Some will do more work. Some will work with passion. Some will work with families. In conclusion, <clears throat> I never say that. You know what that is? That is geese. One is a goose. A group is geese, not grease. And you've seen those fly before in the V. Now, if you notice this picture, why is one side long and the other a few? Why? Anyone know? I know. I know. Because there's more on one side than the other side. That's why one side's more long, is because there's more on that side and few on that side. Now, there's no important reason why that happens that I, I could research. <laughs> For the hearing people, Around here, we don't see it very often. I've seen it a few times in 23 years, maybe three or four times, of the geese flying south or north. But always, I hear them first honk. Do you know which ones are doing the yakking? She says the leaders. No, it is not. It's the ones on the ends who are yakking, encouraging. I always wonder why some people in the church just yak, 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 Oh, no. Now, I real I will never criticize a blabbermouth, I mean, a, I mean a uh, encourager. Again, yeah, the ones in the back to encourage them on. And they fly in that V because the front one makes the air go up, up, up. If one goose was flying by themselves, they could one day could fly from here to here. But as a group, they're able to fly in one day from over there to over there. 71% further if in a group. They've researched this. Uh, 
Hmm. I think there's a lesson to learn from this. Their instinct is to work together to accomplish more. When we work together for the kingdom of God, we can accomplish more and more. I'll say yes. Worship. We're going to do, I will say yes to the Lord. I hope today you will declare yes to the Lord's work.